Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Spitting Venom, aka the Venom Vlog. And today is episode 57, and let's break down a comic book. Actually, we haven't done this in a while, and I really want to sink my teeth into this graphic novel called The Enemy Within. So as we've been going through these storylines and some of the stuff we've break broken down before, like Lethal Protector and Planet of the Symbiotes, those we broke down first because they kind of tied directly into the plot of the movie, as the director, Ruben Fleischer, and Tom Hardy both came out and said that the movie is going to be based on those two storylines. So these stories that we're going to talk about today are all in one graphic novel. They're written by different artists or writers and drawn by different artists. Uh, there's four stories in total. One of them's a one shot and then there's like three three issue miniseries and they're all collected in this book called The Enemy Within. And it's it's really great. It's uh, I remember when these came out in the 90s. I was really hooked on Venom at the time and after Lethal Protector they were like hey we're gonna keep going we're gonna bring in new writers and new artists to have their take on Venom and we're gonna do these three you know, episode stories or four, sometimes five, and then sometimes one episode stories. And we're just going to go through and just hammer out these issues and give everyone a chance to tell Venom stories uh, during his days in San Francisco. And for a while, I don't remember these stories kind of connecting. I don't remember plot threads from the previous one written by a different writer being picked up by the, you know, the new writer, but sometimes there are. And I don't remember them all being set in San Francisco. And I was wrong about that. I was rereading these and I was like, hey, wow, these are all set in San Francisco. And the first story in The Enemy Within Trade Paperback is called Funeral Pyre. And this one was one of my favorites when I was a kid because Tom Lyle did the artwork. And he was at that time one of my favorite artists on Spider-Man. Uh, during the time of the Clone Saga and everything or leading up to the Clone Saga, every Spider-Man book had a there was like four. I think there was Web of Spider-Man, Spectacular, Amazing, and then there was one that was just called Spider-Man that Todd McFarlane started. And then after he left the book, a bunch of different artists came on, but it wasn't until Tom Lyle came along that I was really hooked. And I was like, all right, I love this guy's style. I love his artwork. I'm picking up the book pretty much just for him. And he drew some great stuff. And uh, he did, did redesigns for characters that just looked really awesome. Uh, he did Craven's Son. He did like a Hobgoblin story that really hooked me in. Uh, so I was really on board. And so he draws this miniseries and he draws another character that he did that I really liked, which is the Punisher. So basically all these writers and artists, they were given a task, tell a Venom story, but feel free to bring in other Marvel characters, almost like a Marvel team up kind of book. And the better, the, the more weirder the team up, the better. Because uh, it just lent itself to a lot of like really interesting humor, sometimes dark humor, sometimes just, you know, opposites humor where it's like, all right, someone's a good person. And then you have Venom, uh, who's like this like in-between guy. And it shows him kind of learning by example from other heroes. Uh, and the first one they threw at him was Punisher. And I thought that was interesting because at the, at the time of the comics, Punisher was kind of with his van, like that microchip helped him build. He was like driving around the country and just taking out people all over. And sometimes he would take assignments that would lead him to L.A. and so forth. So in this story, it's him coming back from L.A. trying to head to New York, but he's taking like a going up around to like the 40 or something and going to cross around that way. And he's going that route. And so he, he's going through like uh, he kind of detours off and ends up in Oakland and the Oakland area because he was like, oh, I heard about this crime up there. There's a series of uh, this gang that's like going out of control and they're taking over the streets of Oakland. So on my way back to New York, maybe I'll go and, you know, punish some criminals over there. Meanwhile, you know, Venom's already on this case. He's trying to look into it. And, uh, and the way he finds out about it is from a little kid. So the story opens with this little kid who uh, is with his dad and, uh, and they get caught up in this gang. Like the gang like runs him off the road and the dad like saves the son and then runs into a building and leads the gang into the building. And one of the gang members hangs back and goes to the kid and says, look, get out of here. Go find someone, go to the police, go get someone that can help me. Uh, I'm undercover. He's like, I'm a, a journalist an investigative reporter and my uncle he like worked for um you know hydra or something like that like a new version of hydra and he was creating super soldiers it was like their version of the super soldier program and it was like this small little lab that he was trying to get access to and he he had learned through his dad's files and stuff that this uh this place was in this warehouse and it turns out this gang had taken over that warehouse but they had not as far as he knew didn't find the secret entrance to the lab where they were trying to create their own version of captain america um, with different power sets and stuff so he was like go tell someone to save me I i'm only here to try to get access to my gr my dad's lab and i want to like learn what you know what he was working on but i'm a journalist and so i thought if i could just get in with this gang by you know i paid someone you know, to look like they were getting robbed. And then I like, you know, you know, like or I paid someone to like beat up one of the gang members and then I saved the gang member. And then that's how I got in. But now they're going to make me kill somebody like tomorrow, like around noon or, or whatever. Like where they're going to make me do a drive-by shooting. So I don't want to kill anyone. Please go get someone to help me. And so this little kid happens to know the underground city and because uh, his dad had connections to it uh, where Venom lives. 
And he's like, hey, can you go help this guy? So Venom is on the clock. He is trying to get to this kid. He knows kind of what he looks like. He knows there's a birthmark on his neck. The guy's name is Gray. And he's like, oh, like I said, he's undercover. And so, uh, you know, Eddie Brock's like, hey, I've had to do assignments like that. I'll go save this guy. No problem. So he's running around, you know, going from San Francisco to Oakland trying to find this guy. And meanwhile, the Punisher intervenes and is just coming in and just killing every criminal he comes across. And of course, it's causing, a, it's a thorn in Venom's side because he's trying to get to a certain one immediately and he doesn't want Punisher to accidentally kill him. So he goes and confronts Punisher and Punisher's like, no, get away from me, you freak of nature. And uh, and then locks him up and then like shoots like a, a, a gamma ray thing at him to like keep him in place. And then at the end of the first issue, you see Venom like reaching out and he's like, no, I got to go save this kid. So there's there's like a lot of good drama in this. It's it's kind of crammed in. Like the writing is like really crammed in. I think Carl Potts did the the writing and Tom Lyle did the art. The art's phenomenal, but the writing is like uh, it felt like it could have been a four or five issue story and it would have been more evenly paced. But they had a lot to cover, and so they kind of cram it in pretty tight. Uh, but overall, you know, Venom, he doesn't make it to the kid in time. The kid is forced to kill somebody. And then for that, he goes back to the warehouse. Now that he's part of the gang, he's pissed off. He's angry that no one came to save him. And then he lashes out by breaking into the lab and climbing into the machine that was going to create the super soldier serum, or the super, the, their version of the super soldier, his dad's version, for Hydra. And he comes out with, like, these uh, po powers of pyre. Like, he can shoot, like, flame kind of beams almost like cyclops in a way well those cyclops is never really burnt i don't think i think they were mostly concussion blasts but these burn and they hurt the venom symbiote you know coincidentally um but yeah he comes out and he starts fighting punisher and venom who at this point are teaming up and uh, and now they have to basically fight the guy that they were trying to save so i thought it was a good story it's the first part of this graphic novel um, but I, I don't want to spoil everything about it, so I'll just say go pick up Enemy Within. It's a great graphic novel. It's available on Comixology and Kindle uh, right now, but it's um, also available in print, I believe, still, too. And then after this story, it, it leads right into the next story called Venom the Madness. Venom the Madness is written by Anne Nascenti, and it's, the art is done by Kelly Jones, and the art is phenomenal. And Anne Nascenti is one of those writers I really liked when I was younger. I had a lot of, a lot of my favorite, favorite writers are female writers, um, Agatha Christie being my favorite, uh, but also I liked Louise Simonson, uh, who created or co-created Apocalypse, the character Apocalypse for the X-Men, amongst many other things. She also co-created Steel for uh, the Superman books when Superman died, and you know they had the four different Superman. Um, so I love Louise Simonson. She's awesome. And, uh, and Anne Nascenti who had a great Daredevil run that I, I remember as a kid, but she was also an editor. And I always like when editors become writers because I feel like a lot of times the quality of their storytelling is a little bit better because they know how to work out beats and stuff. And then they also know how to work with editors who are helping them tell their stories. So uh, that always, you know, I really like that. So she was great and she comes on this book and writes some really crazy stuff. So ba basically there's this toxic chemical that's being dumped by this company in San Francisco into the bay. And they're just disposing it as fast as they can because they it, there's all these problems with it. There's mutations going on. Uh, there's people getting sick. And like the, the epidemic, it's starting to become an epidemic. And a lot of people all over the city in this area near their warehouses is getting sick so like let's just dispose of all this stuff before people start catching on and someone learns that we're behind all this um, accidentally and and venom is on the case he figures it out and uh, and he ends up going to um you know actually on the on the way he meets a girl named beck and she's like a new character that and the created who is friends with the underground people and she's like they're above ground source and she helps them out with you know different things and she's kind of like a saintly type person she i think she works with people who are troubled and she also finds an attraction to people who are troubled so when she meets venom there's like an attraction there uh, and there's also an attraction with venom to her and then what happens is venom gets uh into a battle with the the juggernaut so this company that's dumping these chemicals they decide to hire black tom cassidy and the juggernaut to, uh, to kind of kidnap uh, the girl Beck, but also to keep everyone who knows about their stuff quiet. So they're kind of like hitmen. They're like, all right, we're gonna hire you guys to just like take out any of our enemies, anyone who knows too much. And then uh, and then this girl who's like, you know, getting a little too nosy. And l unfortunately for Juggernaut, that girl has buddied up with Venom. So the two of them get in a big fight and Venom gets his butt kicked. And Juggernaut throws Venom into the sewer where the chemicals are being dumped and Venom gets sucked in and the chemicals bleed into the symbiote and start revealing 
um, multiple personalities. But what you what you learn in the story, uh, I think, because the story is kind of abstract and there's like some things I, I, I didn't, I couldn't connect the dots on. So I was like, oh, you know, I'm going to try to get Anne Nascenti to, uh, to be on the show. And luckily she agreed to an interview, but she's going to respond to all my questions in email form and I'll just read them out to you guys. I'll try to find a new, uh, like a cool way to make a video out of it and put images from the comic up. So I'll have more answers soon of some of the things that she was saying in the storyline. Uh, but I really liked the overall story of Venom going over the edge. And he gets a moment where he's a little too hands-on with Beck. And she's like, you know, he's getting a little too stimulated. And he finds out that the symbiote is being affected by this chemical. And that this chemical actually has living beings that are controlling it. Like these, like, you know, otherworldly microverse kind of beings where it's like uh, they, they each represent a different uh, thing like paranoia and uh, and fear and things like that and they kind of seep into um, you know the symbiote and they're driving it, it crazy so that's why it's called the mad madness and he grows the symbiote grows extra heads and Venom's walking around with like eight heads and like he's twice the size he normally is and then he gets into another fight with a juggernaut and beats the crap out of him um, but unfortunately he also starting to lose grip on reality and his humanity and uh, and because of that, Beck gets way too scared to be with him, and they decide to call it quits. Uh, and then they go their separate ways, and then Venom ends up returning the chemicals into the sewer. Um, he, like, purges them from his body and gets rid of them. And then I think the chemicals are later, like, cleaned up and properly disposed of, but I don't think Venom has anything to do with that. I don't know if he called somebody or what. Uh, but, yeah, so that's that was Venom the Madness, and it's, it's a really weird storyline, but it's got great art. And, uh, and Kelly Jones killed it. And Anna Senti wrote a really interesting story. And what I like about these two stories and all the stories in this graphic novel are the one thing I... The, they do the one thing, the opposite of what I don't like in Venom comics, which mostly every time someone writes a Venom story, it's happening a lot in the current runs with, you know, Mike Costa writing Venom and uh, the Venom Inc. stuff. And it just seems like everyone who writes Venom is like, all right, we're going to put Venom against another symbiote. That's all we're going to do. We're going to have Venom eventually lead to a battle with another symbiote, or we're going to have uh, multiple symbiotes come from Venom, or he's going to have children again, or he's going to, you know, it's like, it's the same story over and over. And what I like about these is that they're different. It's, you know, Venom versus Funeral Pyre, a new creator, a new created character, a newly created character uh, teaming up with Punisher. In this story, it was Venom versus the Juggernaut uh, with a Black Tom Cassidy X-Men vibe to it, which was really cool. And then the next story that we're going to talk about is uh, called The Enemy Within, which is what the graphic novel is named after. And it's uh, it's Venom meeting up with Morbius the Living Vampire, who ends up being in San Francisco, and then also uh, the Demogoblin, who died in a Tom Lyle-drawn book um, in Spider-Man. He died. He sacrificed himself and saved, uh, you know, Spider-Man, which was awesome. Uh, who would have thought a, de a demon from hell goblin would do something like that, but he did, and I really like that character. And uh, so in this story, he gets brought back by these little goblins, and they basically resurrect him, pick him to be their leader, and then use him to try to uh, gain power. And there's also like this other guy who was, uh, he was, he was, he's running for mayor, I think. There's a current mayor who's like, we're, we're going to lock up the tunnels. That's where the goblins keep coming from. And we're going to figure out what's going on. And Venom, meanwhile, is like, no, I'm going to go in there and kick the crap out of all these goblins. But he goes in there and gets his butt kicked. And then he finds Morbius. He ends up hurting Morbius. And then it shakes some kind of mind control off of Morbius. And the two of them kind of partner up. And what, and what I really like about the story is even Venom teaming up with Punisher and stuff, they found a common ground, but they weren't friends. I feel like Venom actually makes his first friend here in Morbius. There's a great, uh, com you know, compatibility with the two. Uh, there's it's two people who are who are mo who have become monsters. They were regular people, everyday guys, and they became monsters. Uh, Morbius becoming a living vampire, and then Venom, you know, being a, a symbiote c covering him and taking over, and then working with them. So I like the relationship. Really, uh, really like the relationship. Uh, Bruce Jones wrote this story, and Bob McCloud did the artwork, and it's great. It's a really fun book. I don't remember it being that good. Like I was like, wow, the the relationship between uh, Venom and Morbius is actually really neat, and it's neat to see these two characters who are kind of different but very similar. Uh, kind of work together and that gave me hope for you know these spin-off movies we're hearing about with Silver Sable and Morbius the Living Vampire I kind of now want to see Morbius the Living Vampire and Venom on screen together I hope they cast a good actor to play him uh, because I think anyone who will play with uh, you know against Tom Hardy in that would be awesome so 
Hopefully we see it. That would be great. But buddy comedy aside, I mean, these two do a great job trying to defend the city against these like little green goblins that are like, you know, trying to take over and stuff. And this, there's this guy who's running for mayor and he was like a, a reporter or something. He was like looking into this uh, cult that was going on. He ends up getting caught by the cult. They were going to sacrifice him, but they didn't tie him down properly. And then the cops came in and mistook this guy for one of the cult people. So they arrested him with the cult. And then so this guy, you know, basically grew up or like had that in that part of his life, he started to have a resentment towards authority and, and, and you know, like the law and stuff. And so what he does is he decides to, after he gets out of jail for good behavior or whatever, he tracks down the cult's uh, findings and he finds this amulet. It's given him the power to awaken these goblins, but they don't want him to be the leader. They want Demogoblin to be their leader, so they resurrect Demogoblin. And then this guy who's running for mayor starts to crack and, and reveal himself as a crazy person who has this amulet of power uh, that then he gets defeated and then the amulet gets taken from him by Demogoblin. And Venom's like, no, we got to stop Demogoblin, you know? And then he uses the power to like grow in size and he's like a, a 30 foot Demogoblin walking uh, around San Francisco go and then he gets to a point where he just uh uses the power he was given and actually destroys all the goblins and once again saves the day because even though demogoblin died and probably returned to hell he was brought back and remembers the selfless act he did so he does it again in this one and proves once again that he's an anti-hero in a way he's like more of a good guy than a bad guy and uh, and so he stops the whole threat and venom and morbius are kind of like you know almost useless in the storyline they do a lot and they and, and they they uh, contribute a ton in the story but uh, unfortunately it's demogoblin who steals the show and that's what i also liked about this story was that it wasn't even though it was called venom the enemy within um it was it, there was something new to it. it it didn't end the way i thought it was and venom wasn't like the big hero at the end and he even is like he looks at morbius like well, we tried, you know, and, and the, the again, keeping the buddy, you know, cop comedy kind of thing going on with them. And Morbius like, yeah. And he goes, well, do you want to shake hands? And, and Morbius like, no. He's like, I, I normally bite the hand that feeds me, but it was nice working with you. I'm going to go back to New York. And then he like disappears. And Venom's like, New York snobs. Like, you know, he, he has like a running joke in the story where he's calling every, all the characters that show up in the story are from New York. And he's like, oh God, what? New York snobs coming over here. So it's just like a fun running gag to have in the story. But ultimately, I don't remember this story being that well. It had like a glow-in-the-dark cover for issue one with Venom's eyes and stuff. Uh, but um, but that's all I remembered about it originally. This turned out to be much better than I thought. So it's it was a nice bookend to this to this graphic novel. And the last story that's in this is actually it's just a one-shot. It's written by Peter David and Jim Craig did the artwork. It's called uh, Incredible Hulk versus Venom. And it's just, I think this was like, I can't remember if this was a mail away or maybe that was a Venom Daredevil one. But there was a, a time in the 90s where you could um, take like a, you could rip like a, a thing off of a comic book. Like inside there was like a little form and you could either make a copy of it uh, or rip it out and fill it out and send it in and they would send you a comic book and i don't remember if this one was one of those the the hulk first venom but i think there was with venom and daredevil and spider-man at one point uh that we talked about in another gra uh, another graphic novel i think before uh with like i think it was maybe it was in the vengeance of venom we talked about it but uh this one is just hulk versus venom and it starts off and during this time hulk in his comic uh that peter david was writing uh he was kind of different he, he spoke more eloquently he had a little bit more of a personality and they were trying something different with hulk he was fully clothed uh, so he actually wore stuff that like fit him um and it was he was going through a different phase and then venom at the same time was trying to be more of a hero so when these two meet at the beginning trying to take down this one guy who is uh threatening to like you know cause more earthquakes he's like taking credit for these earthquakes that have happened in the uh, san francisco area and uh, and he's gonna release more he's like i have a machine it's gonna you know cause more earthquakes and hurt more people and so when venom and, and hulk show up they first start show, show up and start fighting each other and then uh, and then they realize they have this great moment where they look at each other and he goes i heard you were different he's like yeah i heard you're trying to be different too and so they both at the same time are like well so prove it so the two of them decide to team up and they go into the uh the news broadcast in san francisco uh like the the station the news station and they're like hey we're going to go find out who this guy is. And Venom's like, hey, I have a soft spot for uh, for reporters. Can they come with us and maybe help us catch the guy? And so uh, Hulk's like, yeah, whatever, fine, let's go do it. And then they show up and there's um, 
you know, like a guy who's just crazy. He actually just has a box, a cardboard box, and it says like earthquake machine on it. And he like is pressing the button. He's like, I told you, don't come near me or I'll, I'll kill all of you. And he's pressing the button and nothing really happens. Um, and, uh, and then they're just like, oh, okay. So there's no one to fight here. Like just police, you take him away. And then Venom and like Hulk walk off into the sunset together. And the news is just recording it like, hey, all right, this is a great story. Um, but there was this great moment in it where like the news reporter's like, she runs up to Venom. She goes, how do I know I can trust you? And then just drooling, drool coming out of his mouth, you know, standing like a foot and a half taller than her, his jaw like unhinged and the teeth all hanging out, his tongue moving around. He just looks her dead in the eye and goes, don't I look trustworthy? And it was like, oh, come on. Like that, the humor, again, the dark humor of Venom is fantastic. So that was the last chapter they put in here. And I'm glad they put that because I was worried that thing, literally these little one-offs that they do with Venom, that they never get trade paperback loved. So it was cool that they threw it in this one and, and made it like a nice 10 comic books in this graphic novel. So if you're out there and you want to read it digitally or at your local, you know, if you could pick up a print copy at your local comic store, uh, please do. It's uh, it's really great. And uh, it's just another fun book that I could break down for you guys. And I really love doing this. So we'll definitely do more coming up. Uh, we have a lot of books we're going to be breaking down for Carnage Week. So be on the lookout for that. We're going to break down like I don't know, like 12 in like five episodes. So we're going to do a ton, but I'm going to do more of a summary more than a breakdown like this. Uh, we're going to just kind of gloss over the plot and just tell you, you know, the, the key moments in it. But yeah, these, these books are great. Uh, I highly recommend them. And right now, once again, Kindle and Comixology are having a crazy sale. I picked up a bunch of the Matt Gargan, uh, who is the Scorpion, as some of you know, in Spider-Man, he becomes the second Venom, or he becomes the Venom after Eddie Brock. I think there was like one guy in between the two of them, uh, but then Matt Gargan does, and he joins a team called the Thunderbolts. And I picked both those graphic novels up, written by Warren Ellis, for like $2 each, or $2.50 each, or something like that. It was a steal. So if you're out there and you buy digital stuff, there's a great sale going on right now. Definitely pick them up. And if you can't, if you don't buy them digitally, Pick stuff up at your local comic store, have them order it because all of these books that I mentioned, especially Enemy Within, that one is still in print and you can still order it. So thank you guys as always for watching this episode. Let me know what you think down in the comments of these storylines. If you have any more questions, you want me to elaborate on something or flesh anything out, let me know down in the comments and I'll respond. Thank you so much. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.